Again, building up the two-on-two -two closeout. Same principles. Closing out high and short, parallel to your man. Force him to the inline and baseline. Again, finishing on each drill with a good box out. Close out high and short. Work on the skip of jumping to the ball, being in the middle of the paint, because if there's penetration, you can get him outside the lane. Again, the rule is weak side must stop him before they get in the paint. Again, the key simulation is handling the cross screen, two on two. The key terminology is we dead front the post on ball side, and on weak side, we shoot the gap. The weak side must be over in the middle of the lane so they don't demand as much help. Defending the post, you get your butt and your back into the front of their chest or their belly button area, and you protect the block until your teammate has recovered on the cutter. Again, get into them, grind on them, shoot the gap so you don't demand as much help. One way of not demanding as much help, you got to get off to the ball or jump to the ball so you can slip the screen sooner. Again, another fundamental defensive thing to work on is defending a high post flash. When the ball's on the wing and you're on the weak side, you got to be up the line. You got to be in sp spacing so you can defend the cut and not chase. Defend the high post three quarters and as they go to the low post, you dead front and then get dead front as just demonstrated. Again, you can have both sides going at the same time. Defend the high post flash, don't let them get it. Slide, slide open is the terminology. Again, part of the three-on-three -three series that every level should be doing is jump into the ball. Your numbers are, your back numbers are to the ball. You're in the middle of the lane, in the center of the lane, so you can give help. The offense is in a control pattern, but we're learning how to move as the ball is in there. We pass, we jump to the ball, we close out high and short on the ball. The weak side has got a hand in the passing lane, inside hand, as you can see. We want to flood the paint. Again, a very good drill of three on three. Front the cutter. The key terminology to use is jump to the ball as the ball is in the air and make sure the man does not face cut you. You keep your body in front of him and don't let him get out of your line of sight. But you got to jump to the ball as the ball is moving and front the cutter. Something that should be used every night as part of a three on three series drill. Again, building up from the three on three jumping to the ball shell drill, we're now adding front the cutter. You still front the cut, keep the guy in your line of sight, don't let him face cut you. Front the cut so you can keep him in your line of sight as well as your body. Three on three, jump to the ball is the terminology you want to use. Close out on the wall, high and short, and play defense on the weak side by being in the middle of the lane. Little full court transition drill, everybody's involved. It's called three on two chaser, or three on two and a half. You have three guys coming in on offense in transition. As soon as they pass the half court line, the def defensive extra player comes in and makes it three on three. The idea is the defender that's chasing in, as you see right now, tries to get in and scrambles and repositions to play three on three. The idea is you only get one shot. You can make it where it's a regular game, but to quicken up the pace, you want two or three passes, get it to the rim, and get back in transition. This is a good defense and offense drill at any age. Again, the three-line passing drills, we want to change it up a little bit. We want both ends set up properly so there's continuous movement. As you can see, this is called three-on-three in-and-out drill, but as soon as another group is ready to go, we're off and going. The idea is to go as quick as we can but without turning the ball over. You may want to challenge your players to better passing and better handling the ball by counting how many turnovers in a one-minute drill. The more they turn it over, maybe the possible more ladders or the more sprints they do at the end. Again, like the three on zero in and out passing drill, the three man weave, a classic drill, but again, challenge your players by how many passes they can make with speed without turning over. Give them a goal, how many baskets they have to make in a minute or two minutes, and then also count the turnover. So every turnover takes a point away. Set the goal, and if they don't reach the goal, they have to do something that improves their ability to make better decisions and better passing. Transition drill called five ball. You need five balls. You need two at each corner of the, of the court. 
and you have one ready to go. You have a three-man weave coming down, and everybody gets a shot. The dribbler, the last one that gets it, gets the layup, and two people that are in the corner ready to go down and transition, pass it to the two people that didn't get to shoot it and get the shot. In that pursuit, then that group goes in, takes off, and goes in three-man weave, as you can see. The layup gets the shot, and the other two get the, get the jump shots. And it's continuous. Five balls, one for transition, two in each corner. Again, another bigger look at five ball transition. Five balls, one in each corner, and one in transition. The guy that gets the layup gets it, then get it out of the rim and transition back. While we have two balls in the corner for the guys that made the passes and hit the shot. Five ball transition, use it against the clock, use it as a goal. They have to make so many scores before the time is up. Again, another variation of not just shooting free throws, but when there's only so many baskets and, and maybe they're tired from running up and down or uh, doing drill work, this is a good variation to go form shooting. Form shooting from four feet, make sure you use two terms especially. Lock out and reach into the cookie jar, reach into the basket. You want that elbow and hand underneath the bat, underneath the ball properly in a squared up form formation, but at the most important is that terminology. Locking out the arm, lock out the elbow, and reach into the cookie jar. Stay four feet. Older guys should be able to hold it with one. The younger guys, third, fourth graders, you may have to use their setup hand, but as they get older, they'll be able to reach in the cookie jar and get that 60 degree angle to drop it into the bucket. Again, form shooting from another step out about eight feet. Don't change anything. Get your proper footwork, but again, set the ball in proper position in two terms. Lock out and reach in. Don't let them bring the ball, don't let them bring the arm down and rodeo it or pull back or yo-yo it. Make sure they extend and reach into the basket where they, they make or miss. Again, I would this would be for more sixth and through eighth grade. Again, form shoot a good way when a person's tired and you're not just shooting free throws. We want to lock out the elbow and reach into the cookie jar. As you can see, some are putting their other hand underneath so they have proper positioning in that picture window, some people would call it. But the key thing is to reach into the cookie jar, as you can see, they're doing a pretty good job of, and following through by locking out the elbow and reaching in. Triple threat drills are good at every level, especially third through sixth grade. Ball toss from the baseline out. Hold the count for about a two second count so they get their proper footwork, proper square up, and then on the third one around the circle, hit the jump shot. Again, one of the biggest mistakes at a younger level is they don't get the ball in position to make a play, whether it's a pass, dribble, or shoot. Again, a key thing is fundamentals of triple threat. Semi-circle, three spots. Get your right foot, if you're righty, in front and hit the jump shot. Get proper positioning, get your body in position and hunt down the shot. A term that could be used to hunt down the shot and then reach into the cookie jar. All you're doing is building up from form shooting now to adding a little bit of movement. Again, a key drill here is the triple threat action but adding the cut through. Overemphasize of squaring up, triple threat, but also making a good basket cut. Grades 3 through 8 should be stressing this as just fundamental moves. 3 through 6 should be doing it almost every day. You make a pass, you cut hard to the basket from only the top in this case, but at the same time you're catching it and triple threading it, overemphasizing the cut. Elbow jumper. You're just working on a square up on a more live action. You're building up from form shooting to triple up shooting to now movement a little farther away from the bucket. Again, proper footwork, get squared up, still reaching into the cookie jar, locking that elbow, reaching in the cookie jar, and then finally getting off your feet. And if you miss, you follow your shot and put it off the board. Again, to get more people involved in the drill and more game shots at game speed, this is elbow to elbow J. You have a rebounder, and they're hustling to the next spot, working on form, but at the same time getting the ball in position as they catch it. Again, reach in the cook jar, lock the elbow out. We're hustling to get to the next shooting spot. And again, game action, game speed. Again, adding to the shooting series to have some 
some strict uh, restrictions as well as getting some fun fundamentals in is elbow to wing. Sometimes we, for younger people they tend to drift but if you give them some parameters from wing to elbow and hustle within a 30 second period of time they're going to get quality shots and quality reps. Another dribble move series is called the vicious pivot. You ball toss out to the wing or the lane line catch square up and attack the bucket and finish with a two foot jump stop and then come from the opposite side and step through it's almost like a dominique move but you're attacking the lane stepping through the gap and finishing the shot jump stop step through it and finish with a strong strong post up or a strong layup again a little variation of transition drills is learning how to attack the bucket after the ball's enter the post this is basically running the court feeding the post and have once the ball is fed in the post I don't if whether it's a half court level or a full court level we want guys cutting off the post having some action where the defense loses their man again run the court three on three get the ball up the weak side bring the post over and then everybody dives to the bucket whether it's weak side or strong side the idea is to teach running to the court running up as far as you can up to the corners feeding the post and not just standing still and watching the idea is to cut off the post like you would see in the NBA series or the college series feed the post cut weak side cut strong side to get more people in the action have two people going two pairs going at the same time pick and roll teaching to wait for the screen but come off the screen hard elbow to elbow and open up to the ball instead of having just one group you can have two groups and use your space more efficiently but everybody should be doing it guards should be picking for bigs and bigs picking for smalls bottom line is to get constant action in your practice and less standing around Pick and roll from the wing, we're simulating a little bit of the Michigan or swing series. We're up screening and coming over and setting the ball screen for the wing, whether it's a two spot on the left or a three spot on the right. Younger guys, grades three through five, it's just learning how to pick and roll at certain spots on the floor. Again, set a good screen, come hard off the screen to draw the defense's attention, and then open up to the ball, roll hard to the bucket. A shooting series that adds screening action is called screen and shoot. As you can see in the first move, it's a down screen and a post up, then an up screen and hit the elbow J, and if you miss, you put it off the board. And the last one is a back screen out of the swing series, pop back or fade and hit the shot. It's kind of then switch partners. First initiation again is down screen, make a post move, whether it's a drop step, like you can see, and then get the ball, set a good up screen, step off hit the elbow jumper and finally set a good back screen know when your screens not effective anymore and open up to the ball and get the back screen jump shot good free throw shooting drill is called firehouse you got a an exterior line on the sideline you're shooting a one on one and you get to the line take your time but you're sprinting in and out if you make the front end of the one one you get to finish it off if you miss you put the ball down on the line and say ball, 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 and you sprint in and sprint out. And when you get to the end of the line, if you did miss the front end of the one, you push five push-ups as you're remaining in line. Again, firehouse. Again, this is called partner shooting. Give certain spots where the player must get to as the rebounder hustles. Again, we want them to hustle to the next spot. In this case, they have five spots to get to, almost like hot shot. Within a minute, how many shots can they make? This is called just partner shoot, and then that'll be the first variation of three. The next version of, of partner shooting is shot fake drive. The defender comes out as dummy D, puts a hand up, and the offensive player must read the defense of a, with a good shot fake, stepping forward, and then getting by the defender and punching the gap, getting into the paint. Do not settle for just getting by, but you gotta get into the paint. Shot fake, step by, get to the paint, and rotate in.